So we're going to get started. Um, this is the harnessing the power of the pitch. This is my favorite part of working with entrepreneurs is working on, on the pitch deck. Um, I want to start by saying that good stories build good pitch decks. Uh, one thing we have to understand about, about the pitch deck, it is really the opportunity for you to tell your story about your business. Um, and if you, was, you see from this graph, this graphic here, an estimated 33 million PowerPoint presentations are given every day in the U.S. According to a Wall Street Journal article, bad PowerPoint presentations cost companies over $250 million a day in wasted time. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of time. And so it's really important that you um, tell your story. All of you have amazing stories in a very succinct and powerful way. And that's how you're going to be the most successful. So we're going to look at three pitches in particular. We have a couple activities that we're going to look at. We're going to look at the elevator pitch, which we talk about a lot. Um, the quick pitch, which is three to five minutes, which is what you will be doing. Those of you that are pitching and, and typically what you do for a pitch competition is typically a pitch that's three to five minutes. And then the formal pitch meeting, which is a little bit more in-depth an investor meeting you've already kind of connected with maybe an investor, an angel, or, or someone else that's looking to possibly um, help you to grow your business. And now you have this pitch meeting that's going to go in a little bit more in depth, a little bit more in detail. And that can be, again, anything from 30 minutes to an hour, just depending on the dynamics of the meeting. So we're gonna look at the building blocks of a pitch deck. Um, and there are 10 essential slides for every pitch deck. These are the 10, 10 essential slides, not including your cover page, right? Now your cover page, you should always put the type of pitch or the type of pitch deck that you are using um, on your cover page. So you wanna date it, you wanna put for next week, those of you that are pitching, you wanna make sure that it includes um, stimulate your startup, on-ramp pitch deck, September 30th, 2021, for example, right? Those, that's what's gonna go on your cover page. And then these are the first five slides of, of, any, of any pitch deck. You have your overview, the opportunity, the problem, the solution, and traction. Those are the first five, we're going to move, and we're going to move forward from there. So the overview is basically, who are you, right? And, and I like to say the overview is, you know, what is the company? It's almost like the elevator pitch in a short one slide, describes the problem you see in the world and how you are going to solve it. It's an overview of your business. Um, and it should demonstrate clarity, swagger, and passion. Your overview should your overview should 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 have clarity, swagger, and passion. And it should answer a couple questions in particular: uh, What exactly does your company do? What industry are you in? And is this is this a novel idea? Is this a good idea? So the overview is really almost like your elevator pitch on one slide, where you just tell who you are and what your business is. Okay, that's your overview. Make sure that it is, again, um, succinct and to the point, okay? Then next is the, um, the opportunity, right? Um, the opportunity should, should be, uh, it, it look at um, the market sector, you want to look at, uh, you want to make sure that there's no confusion or ambiguity about the market, make sure that's clear, make sure that it's thorough, what is it, uh, what happened, what's happening in the market that you see, what is the opportunity that you see, now that's different from the solution, the opportunity is what you see, what do you see as the opportunity in this particular market sector with your business, right? The opportunity slide is your chance to describe your industry and how your business will work within it. 
describe your business and how your describe your industry, excuse me, and how your business will work within within. You want the investor to see the trends. You want them to see um, market conditions that will give an interest in the market. Um, you want this to be uh, the opportunity to really show what, again, to show what the opportunity is. Next is the problem. What is the problem that your business is solving? What is the problem that your business is solving? How big is the problem? Why does the problem exist? How is the problem currently being addressed? What is the problem? The next one is the solution. And here's a quick tip on the solution slide. On the solution slide, do not include any bullets on the solution slide. The solution slide should be a beautiful, you know, graphic with maybe with your, and I'm not saying how to do it, but you just don't want to, you know, just would recommend that you not have any bullets. It's, it's one problem that you're solving. So it should have a nice big graphic. Maybe it's your logo. Um, you know, it, and, and it should have, it should, it should, it should really capture, it should be captivating, um, captivating those that are looking at it. This is the solution that we are providing. This, this, is, this is the solution, right? So um, let's see here who we have that might be give me an example. Um, is Samantha, Samantha, are you on? I think I saw her. Yeah, I'm on. You're on, okay. Um, what, is your, what is your solution um, that you're providing? Sure. So I am. So just as a background, I have the mobile app uh, that's a weight loss competition app. And so my solution, I am providing a tool for motivation uh, to help people lose weight. Boom. So motivation, I would say, is the, is the, I guess, high level solution. And then the more granular level is like just the platform that allows users to compete and communicate with each other and structure their competition. So is it the tool, the tool is part of that, so is it the app though part of that solution? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, the app as a whole, right? Um, but the app, I guess, serves as that motivation factor that's like the missing piece for a lot of uh, people trying to struggle to lose weight. Gotcha. Okay, anybody else? What's your solution? And how did you show that? How do you show that graphic, uh, Samantha? How do you show that solution on your slide deck? Um, so I have, I guess, my second or third slide. I just have screenshots of the app. Um, so I have like the our main introductory introduction screen, um, kind of the screen that shows a snapshot of your competition, and then a screen that shows just like your individual weight loss progress. Okay. All right. Anybody else? What's your solution, and how did you show that on your deck? Well, I've got. I'm. Uh... I can share mine. I'm developing an application for to address problems with movement therapies for neuroatypical populations. And the way I showed a solution is on my slide is I have a little animated GIF of the of the software in you know in situ how it works and what it looks like so that you can see people using it. Okay. Great. Okay, so next, so, does somebody else want to go? Okay, so again, so we have the overview, we have the opportunity, we have the problem, we have the solution. The solution again, you know, bullet points, you want to show a graphic, you know, uh, Michael said a GIF on his, you want to show, you want to show the solution. Um, you don't want to outline the solution, if that, if that makes sense. So the next thing is traction. What evidence do you have that shows this will be successful? Now, whether that's showing how this is going to work now or in the future, that's what that traction slide is about. How's it going to work now or in the future, 
Okay, so uh, the questions that need to be answered on the solution slide. Does it solve the commercial, the customer's problems like magic? <laughs> does, it, does it solve the problem? Is the customer going to crave the product? Do they desire the product? What would the customer's life be like once this problem is solved? Okay, that's how you show traction. How are you going to pull this off? Those are some questions that you want to be able to answer with the traction slide, right? Does it solve the customer's problem? Like magic, like boom, solve. Is the customer going to crave the product? What will the customer's life be like once the problem is solved? And then how are you going to pull it off? That's what the traction slide is all about. Uh, go ahead, Sam. Yeah, a uh, quick question about the traction slide. Um, you said, uh, like, how is it going to get traction now or later? Um, would you prefer to, like, uh, would it be preferable to include maybe both? Like if, if, if the idea is more of a long run, like a solution? Well, if you, if you, if you are operating and you can show traction now, right. you want to show traction now. So like, let's use somebody like Nefertari, for example, she can show sales right. of her eyes. Uh, Samantha can show users of the app. So they can show that now, and then you can then and then build from there. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes sense. So show like you know what kind of traction you have currently, and then also um, like kind of your maybe almost like goal goals. All right, perfect. Yeah, thank you. That helps. So traction is all about you know how we're moving, how we're moving, how we're progressing. Okay. Right. Thank you. you yep. Yeah. So now let's move on to the next five. So those are the first five. Let's move on to the next five. Again, 10 essential slides. Customer or market, competition, the business model, team, and use of funds. Those are the next five slides, right? So let's start with uh, customer or market. Who are your customers and how many of them are out there. So many people struggle with this um, with this question or this, not just this slide, but even in the business plan. I always get nervous when I work with entrepreneurs that tell me that everybody's the customer. Everybody's not your customer. Um, data, research, deep dives is how you begin to determine who your customer is. And so it can take time and there are different ways that you can test those ideas, whether it's surveys, whether it's um, focus groups, um, you know, whether again, it's, um, it's um, uh, research studies. There are different ways um, to identify who your customer is. So this slide you want to down, um, go ahead, Stephen, I'm sorry. I was gonna ask, uh, could you also use the traction that you've uh, been gaining? Do you use attraction as uh, finding out your, your customers? Well, sure, that's a yeah. So that's how, that, that would be part of your case, your case study. You could actually do a case study from those that have used your product or service. And you can really use that, right? When you put, put that data to see the, the to determine what the demographics are, the age, you know, the taste or whatever, you know, whatever the product is that you're selling, yep. And so with the customer market slide, in this slide, you demonstrate how well you know your customer and the market they, re they represent. You want to describe where they live, what they like to do. I, I, you know, we, we go and, and we do market research um, with, with, our, with our folks. We go as far as naming the person. Like we, de we go totally deep down, you know, um, this is Susan. She lives in Brooklyn. She drinks tea twice a day. 
she suffers from anxiety, whatever the case may be, a really deep dive into that actual customer, right? Uh, so that you know everything that you need to know about them. So you describe the person in a way that reminds listeners, this is key, this is key in your, in your slide deck as you're telling your story, you describe the person in a way that reminds the listeners of someone they know. Describe them in a way that reminds listeners of someone they know. So that they can automatically say, wow, that's uh, this sounds something like something great for, 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 for Cynthia. That sounds like something great for this person or that person. Right? A clearly defined market gives specific numbers of how many people fit your customer description, including how many people might possibly buy your product, what percentage of those people you expect to buy it, and which ones you will target first. Because here's the thing, when you look at a target market, right? Here's the thing you have to understand. You are either trying to do one or two things at, with, with, the, with, the, with the market when you are looking at the customer in the market. You are either trying to, and I think I think Jeff said this last week, you are either trying to, and you're trying mostly to carve out a space in that market. So like when I deal with my mompreneurs that are in the hair and beauty market and they, and they first thing, most of them give me that slide, hair, the hair and beauty industry is a $200 billion industry. Great. How much of that industry are you going to carve out for you and how are you going to do it? Okay. It's great that the, it's great that the industry, that, that is a huge market, but how are you going to carve out a part of it for yourself and how much are you going to carve out and how are you going to do it? So you have to clearly define your market. And then uh, revenue is much easier to argue that there's a demand for your product if you have paying customers. So when you, those of you that are already in business and you, you have paying customer, it's much easier when you can say um, that we already, you know, have X amount of users. We have this, we have, we have, you know, we, we have sales. It's easier um, to really, uh, to argue the demand for your product when you already have sales. So with the customer market slides, you want to, you want to answer questions like, who is your customer? You want to answer questions like how you're going to reach them. Um, this is always my favorite because nobody knows how to, nobody, a lot of people struggle with this one, which is what is the acquisition cost per customer? Um, is your customer willing to pay for your product or service? Um, customer acquisition cost is everything from advertising, your social media, time you spent, like you have to look at all of those things, your social, your website, all of those things that are part of customer. How much does it cost you to acquire a customer? So whether you have done that now or what is the plan for the future, it's a number that you, that you have to know, that you should know, okay? Questions, comments? Next is competition. Oh, someone had a question or comment? No? Okay. Next is competition. Who or what will steal your customers? Competition. Um, like I said earlier, folks that say they have no competition worry me. And the thing we have to understand is that there is primary and secondary competitors. That's really important, right? Because um, if I'm a boutique, if I'm a little small, you know, boutique. Uh, Walmart is not my is not my competition. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> they're, just, they're just they're just not they're not my competition. The boutique in South Philly that sells the same product that I had is more likely my competition. Does that make sense? Right, we, we have to be clear about competition, primary and secondary. When I was in the t-shirt um, industry um, and, we, and we would deal with this as far as t-shirts, because t-shirts are a commodity, everybody had a t-shirt brand, 
Um, you know, we, we were very clear that, you know, there were um, t-shirt brands for women that just clearly, they were not our competition. But the other little small, similar companies that had t-shirts like ours, those were our, those were our, comp those were our competition. So be clear about your competition. It's important that you understand um, your, comp your competition. Every venture has competition. Every venture has competition. And your customers will be doing, and this is the best way to, to find out who your competitors are. It's a simple question. Your customer must be doing something right now to cope with the problem you solve. That something is your competition. What is that something? That, that something that your competitor is doing? What is that something that your competitor is doing? Excuse me, that your customer is doing other than you. That's your competition. Okay? That something is your competitor. And you could say, and see, and here's the thing, this is how you begin to identify differentiators because you could very well say, like, when I look at somebody like Philly Experiences, right, that provides um, tours um, specific to, um, and I like to say what, what, what Chrissy does is takes people on tours that locals would only take someone on, like, like right in the neighborhood. When you go on one of her tours, you're not going to go see the Rocky statue or independent. No, 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 no. You're going to go to 52nd and Market, or you're going to go see a mural, or you're going to ride to something. You're going to, you're going to see Philly the way that those of us live in Philly. So while those tour guys that ride the big bus down to 12th and Market are a competitor, she has carved out a, 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 a niche within that competitor, within that, within that tourism area to meet another, to meet a niche. She's carved out a, a differentiator within that tourism, within tourism. Does that make sense? Questions, comments, smiles, claps, something. Talk to me, y'all. <laughs> I'm clapping because I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> so I was appreciate you saying that because I'm like, is Visit Philly my competition? Would the Big Bus Company be my competition? And in terms, when you ask the question, what are customers doing right now? I think they're settling because they want something to do. But if they actually get a chance to do what they want to do in the city, they would find me. Right. Exactly. So, so yes, they have something else that they're doing, but you have a unique proposition to offer of a differentiator from what it is that they're doing. Anybody else, somebody else tell me who your, some of your competitors are. Share, share a competitor. Sure, Tanya, I can go, because I actually kind of have a question about this. Um, so I have the mobile app. Um, some competitors are, for example, Weight Watchers has an app, but it's different because it's more um, calorie counting and meal prep. Um, you have the Fitbit, which does competitions, but it's not actually weight loss competitions. It's you know, for steps. Um, so I guess those are app competitors, but um, what customers are, are currently doing, um, a lot of people um, have Facebook groups where they do these weight loss competitions. And so there's always one person that's running this competition and taking everybody's weight every day or every week and then sending out updates. So basically my app is replacing that person. Mm -hmm. um, so would you say that's my competition along with the apps or is that just something that the users are currently doing? I think, I think that you, you hit it on the head. I think those Facebook groups are, are a competitor. Okay. Right? Um, your tool, as you said, replaces that part of of the competition of that of that group as far as being that person. Now they can turn to um, turn to the app to do what that person is doing. That's serving as that that motivation in a lot of ways, a whole and accountability in a way. Okay. 
So should I make that the highlight, like th that the greatest competitor and then the apps are kind of sub competitors or how would you like position that? Uh, I think in your case, Samantha, um, I don't, I don't know if they're all, if you have to break yours out in the primary and secondary. Okay. Um, because even though I get what you're saying as far as I, I, I see, I see, I see Weight Watchers being less of a competitor um, and better fit, uh, which is the one I have on my phone. I think better something is called that reminds me to drink water and all that kind of stuff. Um, the competition part of it, is, the motivation part of it, is really is really your differentiator, right? Right. Yeah. So um, you know, as far as as far as that goes, I'm, I'm thinking those groups. Um, are, are heavy competition for you um, because there's so many of them. Right. You know? Um, okay. So I'd I have to see, i have to see your deck. Has either uh, Priyanka or, um, or Tierra seen your deck? I would like to hear some feedback. On that. Um, tomorrow I'm doing my review. Okay, okay, okay. Who do you have? Okay. Who do you have? Oh, oh I'm sorry, uh, Priyanka. Okay, so she's on the phone, so she, so she'd be able to answer that. Uh, she's on the she's on the session, so she could probably speak to that. I mean, unless you want to speak to that now, for you want to speak to that? Free. Maybe she's not able to speak. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna keep moving. Yeah, know. I can ask her later. Yeah, you can. Y'all can talk about that tomorrow. Yeah, that's fine. So did I answer your question? Are you good? Yes, you did. Thank you. So um, list of competitors, what should I demonstrate? On this slide, you want to really demonstrate your knowledge of the industry. Um, again, differentiation, unique advantage, like we talked about with Samantha and, um, and Chrissy. You want to be able to, to demonstrate those things. Um, questions you need to be able to answer. Who are your primary and secondary competitors? Um, in what ways do they compete with your customers? Are there any unknown or potential competitors that would have a better advantage? Uh, do you displace commonly you companies? Uh, how will you disrupt the current competitive landscape? Um, are you fast or cheaper better? That's what we mean about disruption. Are you fast or cheaper uh, better? Those are the things that, that, that you're looking at. Um, and why won't an incumbent rip your product off and roll it out faster than you can? Um, next is the business model. How are you going to make money? Right? How are you, how are you going to make money? Um, was having this conversation with one of our um, uh, cohort applicants yesterday. Uh, as it relates to money, because obviously, like many of, of us, had to pivot as a part of, uh, of COVID. Um, she had been selling in person, now she's online, and she's still trying to figure out, you know, what to do as far as manufacturing is concerned. So your clarity around your business model, certainty around your business model, um, and how are you going to be, how do you want to make money? Are you going to be subscription based? Are you going to be uh, sales, uh, online sales, in front, uh, you know, all, mail order, all of whatever, whatever, whatever it is, uh, fee for service, whatever it is, that's what your business model is about. How are you going to make money? Right. And so for those of you that are pre revenue, um, you have the good fortune of really making an, an assumption about your financials. And these are some of the things that Jeff talked about last week. You want to kind of, you know, fall back on some of those things, keep those things in mind as you're thinking about it, um, as far as creating assumptions or pro and or projections or critical insights, okay? Know your numbers. Um, I can't say it any more plainly than that. You got to know your numbers. Uh, so some of the most important aspects, revenue, gross profit. So um, revenue minus expenses equals profit. Revenue minus expenses equals profit. 
Um, and then you may, depending on some of the questions from those that are listening to your pitch, I might ask about your burn rate, as far as what's the money that you have now, how fast are you going through it? Uh, you know, those kinds of things. Um, can you acquire customers for less than a third of their lifetime value? That's something that Jeff talked about last week as well, as far as the lifetime value of a customer, meaning that repeat, you know, are they coming back? Are they continuing to buy and sell? You know, repeat customers, there's something for you to think about. Um, how are you recycling your customers as a part of your business model? Um, what this slide should really demonstrate again is um, what is your monthly burn rate? How, how will your revenue projections, are they reasonable? Um, the consistency and financial literacy and level headedness. Do you know your numbers? Do you know your numbers? Okay. So that's your business model. Business model is all about how are you going to make money? Lastly is your team. Who's going to pull this off with you? Now, for those of us, those of you that are solopreneurs, don't get nervous. <laughs> so, don't panic. It's just me. But time is just me. I, I, we get it. And, and most folks, most folks get it. So, but if you if you don't have anyone other than yourself, what would your dream team look like? What would those roles be? Right? What would your dream team look like? What would those roles, what would those roles be? Um, I think I was talking to Christy a couple weeks ago about um, starting to hire and train tour guides and um, you know other things that you that you may that other that you may need. So start thinking about what your dream team is going to look like, and then if you have folks, you want to have you know um, if you can show people, then you want to have a a, a, a hedge. You want to have a good picture and a short bio, or just tell a story. And like, like you know, we have a, I have a slide. For mom, your business. I think it's just it's just four of us on that particular slide and the titles. And I just tell the story. I don't even go into, you know, I don't give a whole bio. And folks that have those slides that's got folks' whole story bio on them, please don't do that. A little short picture <laughs> with a, with a title and keep it moving. Okay, no need to tell folks life story, including your own. Tell your background. You know, tell your your story as succinctly as possible and connect it to what it is that you're doing. And you really, the main thing for the team slide is why are you and these folks the right people for the job? Why are they the right people for the job? Okay. And even if you talk in the future, you're going to hire so and so, you know, later. Like we're hiring a community manager right now, so you know we start we're starting to talk about that in the future, right? So you want to start, you know, looking at it from that perspective as well. And then the last slide, which is my favorite, is use of funds. How will you? What? Uh, you, what is the money that you're asking for? And how are you going to? What is the amount of money that you're asking for and how are you going to use it? You can have a nice big graphic. You can say we're raising a $5 million series A round with three goals. This is what we're going to do with it, right? Boom, boom, boom. We're raising $150,000. We're raising $150,000. Uh, 75000 is going to be used uh, on the case study, marketing, and to revamp our website, the other fifty thousand dollars is going to be used uh, for manufacturing and product development. Boom. Seven. Three goals. This is what we're raising. This is how we're going to use it. Short, sure. sweet.
So now we're going to do a little exercise. <laughs> Questions about the 10 slides before we move to our new exercise. Questions, comments about the 10 slides. So, um, hi, this is Kenny. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. So, um, for the pitch competition next week, um, <coughs> what's the time limit? Like, is it five minutes? It's three um, to five minutes, yes. Three to five minutes, okay. Three to five. That's a lot of slides to cover in five minutes, so. It's really not. <laughs> Really, it's really not. You got to tell your story. That's why you got to tell your story. You got to know your product. And here's the here's here's my here's my fallback. Right? These are these these are the ten slides. Right? But here's my fallback. Why you? Problem, solution. Why me? Why now? If you can tell that story, you can't even you don't stress the slide. Can you tell that story? Problem, solution, why me and why now? Okay. Those are the 10 essential slides. So now I have a little activity. Anybody else have any other comments or questions before we play a couple games? <laughs> I got I got a question. Because I'm selling pies, I'm trying to connect the dots because my my product and my business is something totally different. What do you mean? Different. To me, it well solving a problem. For me, okay, what people don't bake, I'm I'm just trying to like fill this out. People don't bake nowadays. So is that solving, would that be solving a problem? Because it's a homemade product, they don't bake. People are missing out on I'm this. trying to understand it. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I'm, just, I'm listening. I'm trying to see if anybody else wants to answer the question. I Help me, yeah. Bruce is nodding, Bruce is nodding, and I'm there. Darren right. is nodding, so I'm trying to, you know. Yeah, somebody help. Help me out. I think your problem would be more where you could focus your problem more as like access. Like it's not that people don't bake, it's that people want great products, but they just don't have access to it. So if you can come in and offer your pies at, at a, you know, obviously higher level than people currently get, that's solving the problem. People might not even realize they have that problem, but deep yeah. resentment and they're like, oh my God, where, what have I been missing out? Good right. taste, a good taste in homemade pie. That's a that's a problem for, for that. That's a problem. <laughs> 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 and access, access no problem. Home that's a problem. Okay, problem. okay, they solve the problem. Because right, delicious <laughs> pie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, thanks. Uh, Debbie's is a Debbie's. Debbie's. Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> like I have a I have a friend of mine. My friend Sharice. Who is um, French toast bites? Uh, French toast bites. Uh -huh. Cherise says that she, her goal is to be the Auntie Annie of French toast. She's gonna do it. <laughs> is there a problem with people being able to make French toast? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about telling that story of that. It's about telling, it's about telling, telling, telling the story. Anybody I else? actually. Oh. Did you have your hand up or were you, was that the last time? Sorry? Did you have your hand up or was yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, just one more question about the team yeah. slide. So just uh, our names, titles, and then kind of like, don't, instead of like having a description, like sentence about like what our qualifications are, just kind of uh, like talk about them instead. Yes, okay. that's the same time, right? You just want to have that team, that team slide. You know, like I, like I said, if I have mine, I'll say, you know, my name is Tanya Morris. I've been a nonprofit for 20 plus years, uh, working primarily with women and starting a business, uh, 
fixing their credit, purchasing their first home. This is Kelly Green Adams. She's the chairman of our board. Kelly and I have been friends for 30 plus years. She's a licensed therapist. She's an entrepreneur. This is Dr. Tamara Hill Benny. She's a licensed optometrist, but she's also a sustainable business coach. Boom, I just keep going. All right. Okay. All right, y'all ready to play some games? <laughs> Because uh, one thing I noticed that challenges folks is the elevator pitch. It's called the elevator pitch because you're supposed to be able to tell your story in 10 to 15 seconds, the time in which it takes an elevator to go from one floor to the next. That's why it's called an elevator pitch. So we want to I want to practice. I want to help some of you all uh, practice telling, telling your story. Um, in a couple of different ways. Um, let's do, let's do the one word pitch. If you could use one word to describe what you want others to know, do, and feel about your venture, what would it be? One word. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I, I would say, I, I have an it. answer. Go ahead, Ned. Amazing pies. One word. Amazing. <laughs> Boom. Anyone else? Phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> I would say for mine, it would be entrepreneurial, okay. I would say. OK. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? Community. Community. Beautiful. Yes. Motivated for mine. Beautiful. Wonderful. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, people come. All right, I'll say improvements. There you go. There you go, Michael. There you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. One more. Anybody else? For, for me, I would say delicious. There you go. Mm -hmm. I guess I do discover. For Disco discovery. There you go. There you go. There you go. Oops, there you go. All right. You <laughs> got this. Okay. So now, now we're going to do the Pixar pitch. We all know what Pixar is, right? <laughs> Pixar is a big key thing. So we're going to. Uh, this was a storyboard activity originally created by Emma Coates in the framework of a Pixar movie. So it goes like this. Once upon a time, there was blank. Every day, blank. One day, blank. Because of that, blank. Because of that, blank. Until five. Right? So here's, a, here's an example. Once upon a time, there was a thriving industry for do-it-yourself home improvement. Every day, homeowners and contractors use stores like Home Depot and Lowe's to renovate and maintain their homes. One day, people began to become more conscious of their environmental impact. Because of that, they began to seek out sustainable alternatives for things they were already buying. For food, they went to Whole Foods. For clothes, they shopped at stores like Patagonia. Because of that, people began to look for sustainable alternatives for home improvement. Until finally, Treehouse created the first sustainable home improvement store. Michael's looking like, what is that? <laughs> Michael's like, mmm. Matthew's like, mmm. I don't know if I can pull that off. Let me see. Anybody want to take it out for a spin? <laughs> Probably do it. You can do it? Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, Dan. <laughs> All right. Uh, once upon a time, there were millions of small business owners. What's the next one? Every day. Every day, they would struggle to grow their business by themselves wearing too many hats. 
uh, one day, one day they realized the benefit of utilizing college students to help them grow their business. Because of that. Because of that, they were able to delegate tasks that they didn't need to do and focus on the core aspects of their business. Because of that. And because of that, their businesses grew and the college students gained hands-on experience that uh, they wouldn't previously have. Until finally. Until finally, Elm became the, pro the preeminent destination for all small business owners to go to. <laughs> that was incredible, man. <laughs> Don't get that. That was so dope. <laughs> Come on. I know somebody got that. Come on. Right. I'm in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, once upon a time, there were kids with autism who needed to do movement therapy to help themselves improve. Every day they struggled because it was boring and their therapists and parents struggled because they couldn't get it, get their kids to do it effectively. One day? One day someone came along with the virtual reality game that the kids loved and got them move, doing their movement therapy every day. Because of that? Because of that, they improved their basic neuromotor skills and were able to go on and learn how to read, how to dress themselves, and communicate better with other people. Because of that? Hopefully, they, um, well, they improved their life skills beyond what they had expected or their parents or therapists had expected was possible. Until finally? Well, that was my until finally. Until yeah. finally. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Everyone's expectations. That was wonderful. Good job, Michael. <laughs> Good job. That's a fun, that's a fun little exercise. This is all about getting you to your elevator pitch. You know, showing up your elevator pitch, getting to your elevator pitch. 10, 15 seconds. Let's try another one. Let's see what we got here. Uh, the proud grandparent pitch. Let's try that one. What would your technology... Te what would, I'm sorry, what would your technical, logically illiterate grandma say if she were bragging about your company? Keep in mind, her bridge friends probably don't care about the technical details. What do they care about? What would your, I'm trying to think, my grandmother was long gone before where we are right now. So <laughs> my mom don't even understand what I do. <laughs> So, uh, so let me think. What would your technically, technical, technologically, technologically illiterate grandma say if she were bragging about your company? Keep in mind, her bridge friends probably don't care about the technical details. What do they care about? So here's an example. The people are so sweet and nice. This is the same tree story, the tree house uh, business. The people are so nice, sweet and nice at tree house just the most well-mannered and polite bunch of young folks you'll ever meet in your life. My grandmother would probably say, my grandmother would probably say, Tanya's out here trying to tell these women how to run their business. <laughs> That's probably what my grandmother would say. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know about y'all's grandma, but that's probably what my Anybody want to take a shot at that one? I'll give it a shot. I don't want to monopolize things, but if no one else wants to go. Okay. Um, ever since using Groove Catcher, my autistic grandson comes to me when I go to his house and he looks me in the eye and says, hi, grandma, and gives me a big hug. Nice, I love it. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's do one more, and then I'm going to ask you guys to give me some elevated pitches, okay? Let's do one more. A customer just rated your product five stars on an app store, Amazon, Yelp. What does the 50-word blurb that she wrote say? Oh, this is a good one. Someone just wrote a review. 50 words, what does it say? Now, here's an here's a, here's a example. Bar none, the best place to buy DIY. If Lowe's and Whole Foods had a baby, 
it would be treehouse. If you care about the environment, your family or home improvement, then you should consider stopping by. Don't trust me, come and see for yourself. You won't be disappointed. So what would, what would, what would a five-star review, 50 words, what would it look like? Take a couple of minutes. I want somebody to write something out for this one. Um, I'm gonna go. Can I go? Go ahead, Kenny. All right. Um, I think a, a review for Elari Tiger Nut Root Milk would be something like, wow, I can't believe this. I just tried Elari Tiger Root Nut Root Milk and I it's delicious and works well with my morning coffee. And um, it's unbelievable that there isn't any sugar added to this stuff. I tr it's better than almond milk because my um, it's allergen free. My son who has not allergies, I can feel comfortable feeding this to him. And at night I once tried it with cinnamon and hot cocoa and it really relaxed me to go to bed. Nice, I like it. Good job, good job, Kenny. Okay. Anybody else? Oh my God, I just tried Sister's Original Supreme Pie. It was so phenomenal. I ate every bit, every piece of it in two seconds, and I'm even trying to eat the crumbs out of the pan. <laughs> Love it, love it, love it. Anybody else? All right. So now I want to hear some elevator pitches. 15 to 20 seconds. Uh, for your elevator pitch, right? 15 to 20 seconds. Um, let me see, let me see. Uh, I just want to make it one more thing. So 15 to 20 seconds. Remember who you are, what you do, why you do it. My name is Tanya T. Morris. I am the president and founder of Mom Your Business. We are on a mission to help black and brown female founders turn obstacles into opportunities through education, mentoring, and access to capital. Pitch, elevator pitch. Okay, I'm gonna try this, ready? I go. Hi, my name is Nefertari. I am the CEO of Sisters Original Supreme Pie, building a legacy for my family. We make four wonderful pies, butternut squash, carrot cheese, and bean pie. Okay. Come on, who else? Yeah, I can go. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of the app Politic. We're focused on democratizing democracy to re-engage the citizenry with their voice in today's government. Like it, beautiful. Who else? Chrissy? Yes, I think I'm ready. Can you hear me? Great. I am Chrissy, a Philly native who is determined to bridge the gap between the locals, the visitors, and the small businesses in the hood with great curated experiences that get you into real Philly culture. Love it. <laughs> Anybody else? That's going great. Go ahead. Hi, Bruce. So I'm Bruce Wilner. Uh, Daylight Instruments make scientific tools so anyone can learn science and make discoveries in their own homes. I love it. <laughs> Good job, Bruce. Good job. Good job. Anyone else? Michael or uh, Sam? Hey. All right, I'm ready. Um, I'm, Michael I'm Michael Stauffer, the founder of Bismuth. 
where we're building virtual reality-based movement therapies that are fun and engaging to keep kids moving forward in their, yeah, I lost it. To, <laughs> to keep kids succeeding in their critical growth. Okay, wonderful, good job, good job. You guys are doing great. So I really wanted to really take some time to, because remember that overview slide? That's your pitch, that's your elevator pitch. That overview slide to open up that deck, that is the same thing. When you start your pitch, it's your elevator pitch. So to Kenny's question about 10 slides not being, not being enough, three to five minutes not being enough for 10 slides, you can do it. <laughs> you, you can do it. And we're here to help you. If anybody wants to reach out to me or Priyanka or Tierra um, or Angela, to get some help on your pitch as you get ready for next week, um, or even just in general, we're always um, going to be here to help you um, to do that. But I think that you all will be doing uh, fine. Um, this was really uh, a part of the pitch thing, but you guys did a great job with that. Just some, some things that we hit on, which we did. Outcome, one sentence that sums up what you do, tell a story. The, of that outcome from one customer's perspective, um, identify one aha moment and the results. How are your product or services changing your customer's lives? That's, that's really what the context of your elevator pitch should really um, include. That should really be the content of it right there in those four, in those four um, items. And I think you all did a great job uh, on that. And again, purpose of us doing that exercise is so that that become that elevator pitch becomes your opening of your opening slide of your overview. You tell that same story. That's how you pique interest into your pitch deck, and then you move right into your first slide uh, from there. Which is the opportunity. All right. You got that, Bruce, before I move on? Yeah. Okay. I need to show what that does. I want to make sure. So really quickly, again, just to summarize the elevator pitch, the quick pitch um, is typically three to five minutes. I don't know why it's looking like that. Um, the quick pitch, which is what you will be doing, those of you that are pitching, and typically this is for any, any pitch competition. Short form pitch is typically three to five minutes long and includes the company basis, problem solution team, the market, all the things that we talk about, uh, goals and the use of, um, use of funds. And you want to end with one contact slide. So which you, don't, don't forget that, end with your contact information. Use of funds. And then that very last slide should be your contact information, website, and all of that kind of good stuff. Um, should be the very last slide. Number of slides, 10 minimum, 10 minimum, 10 minimum. That you got to go over in three to five minutes. And then the pitch meeting is really more of a sales pitch, right? Um, and there's like five, we like to talk about the five stages of that, which is you building the rapport, warming up the room. Um, stage two is asking questions and listening to show respect. Stage three, you deliver the prepared comp component of your pitch. So that's where you would really be sharing your deck. Then stage four, you deliver the improvised component of, component of your pitch. That means now, you know, you're kind of, you know, you're engaged, you're improvising based on how you're reading and feeling out the room, okay? And then lastly, you want to ask for one thing if necessary and leave on a good note. You want to ask whatever your use of phones are, whatever your ask is, know what your ask is going into the meeting. Um, very quickly, I'm going to go over Get Back, which is the book that I've been referencing that Gary told us about when he was here. It is excellent. I highly recommend it if you want to dig into more. They've got a lot of examples of pitch decks in there. Um, the four ways, and I was talking to Nefertari about this yesterday, there are four ways to raise money created through profits, revenues minus expenses, equals profits. If you make a profit that way, you don't need an investor. Cool, take your hands off too. <laughs> Claps up. 
But don't miss this opportunity on next week for those of you that are pitching to get some free money. Okay, non diluted. You can borrow it through debt, banks, CDFIs, all that kind of stuff. You can buy it through equity, you can buy it through selling equity, through private equity, hedge funds, VCs, um, and then angel investors, uh, or getting people to donate it through crowdfunding. Uh, crowdfunding is rapidly becoming a very um, powerful resource to raise funds for entrepreneurs, uh, and, it, and it works. So when it comes to getting back, uh, uh, this is one of my favorite sports movies is Moneyball. And there's a line in it where Billy Bean says, uh, Brad Pitt says, once you get the answer that you want, hang up. So when you get the answer that you want in a pitch meeting or at a pitch, that's it, the end. No more, no, don't drag it out. Don't ask about, don't add anything, don't take anything away. Once you get the answer that you want, the end. <laughs>